of God that's really, really blessed my life for 15 years. It was 15 years ago that Dr. Cho first came to Bethany, changed our life. Six weeks later, we launched our cell groups, and the rest is history. There's a multiplication anointing upon him of faith, of power. I want you to put your hands together this morning and welcome back to the pulpit, Dr. David Yonggi Cho, as he comes this morning. Hallelujah. 세계 최대 교회를 세운 조용기 목사님으로 교회 성장의 비결을 배우려는 참석자들의 열정은 뜨거웠습니다. God is a good God. He will do a great goodness to us, to each and every one of us this morning. You know, 1958, when I started my pioneer work at the suburb of Seoul City, those days Korea was very, very poor after the war. And we also has not, had nothing to eat and to wear. And we rented a mountain slope and put a very old American marine tent and strew a few sheets of the straw mats and we started to have service. Outwardly speaking, when I see the situation, there was no hope. Absolutely wretched and poor. But when I closed my eyes and when I began to pray, the Spirit of the Lord gave me visions of the great church. I could only dream great church. Tens of thousands of people soon to church worship the Lord. When I opened my eyes, I could see only a tent. But when I closed my eyes, the Spirit of the Lord gave me the visions and dream of a big, wonderful church and helped me to believe so I spoke to my friends and neighbors that I was going to have the largest church in Korea. They really laughed. They really thought that I was losing my mind. But I was having a two personality. Outwardly speaking, I was wretched and poverty stricken. But inside, I was very enriched with visions and dreams and faith. And I myself was confused, which way should I believe? Should I believe my feelings or should I believe my visions and the faith? But the Spirit of the Lord helped me to believe the visions and the faith. Those days I was more influenced by the Holy Spirit and the feeling. I prayed every day more than five hours. And so I was living in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then everything began to happen as I visioned and dreamed. All things began to work together and the church began to grow and miracle after miracle occurred and helps came from unexpected sources that my church began to grow. And finally, after 50 years, I'm pastoring the largest church in the world, 800,000 members. And during the course, the Spirit of the Lord put another vision into my heart. I was dreaming, seeing myself going to the end of the world, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, America, South America, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, all the South Pacific Islands. I was seeing myself going there and the preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that was also a vision took my heart. I was pregnant with that vision. And I began to believe. I began to speak about that. Those days it was impossible because mostly we were a missionary receiving country. We you could not dream of going out of the country bringing Jesus to other people. But I had visions and dreams, impossibility thinking, impossibility visions, but still I was pregnant with visions and faith. Then 1964, God began to open the door for me to minister in Germany. Then all through these years I went around the earth more than 100 times. I've spoken to about 400 cities around the world. God fulfilled visions and dreams. God fulfills your faith. So, actually, we are living in two worlds, especially Christians, because we are living in the physical world as well as in the spiritual world. Geometrically speaking, you know, the first dimension is uh, one line between two points. That is first dimension. 
Second dimension is plane. And third dimension is cube. What is fourth dimension? As we know, the second dimension subdued the first dimension, and the third dimension subdued the second dimension. And then, what is going to subdue the third dimension? Time, space, and material. That I call fourth dimension, because Bible, when you read Genesis, when the whole earth was in chaos, the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the water. And then light appeared, and sky appeared, and the earth appeared, and all the plants appeared, sun and moon appeared, birds and fish and animals appeared. Till the Spirit of the Lord hovering over the broken earth, nothing happened. You see, the broken earth, chaotic earth, is a material thing, third dimension. But Holy Spirit is unseen, unlimited, eternal, spiritual, fourth dimension. And exactly the same way God said to Adam, subdue the world, subdue the earth. How do you subdue the earth? Through the military power? No. Through the fourth dimension. When God created human beings, God created in two persons, outward person and inside person, third dimensional person and the fourth dimensional person. Third dimensional person sees, hears, tastes, tastes, touch, and all of these material things. Fourth dimensional person is your spirit. You have fourth dimension in your third dimensional physical body. Unbelievers, they do not recognize that. But without knowing the situation, many of unbelievers use the fourth dimension to subdue the th third dimensional life. And so they make a great miracle and success. And many Christians, even though they are born again, they recognize their spirit, the fourth dimension, but still they do not manage their fourth dimension. They leave the fourth dimension alone so that they would still have a failing subdue the life. You can conquer the world, you can subdue your third dimensional physical body, your home, your business, your life, your world, because you are more than third dimension. You are fourth dimension living in third dimensional physical body. Amen. So through that fourth, fourth dimension, God wants you to subdue your circumstances and natural world. And many people are not living the life of subduing their circumstances. It is very important to live by the spirit, not by the physical body. And your fourth dimension is called in the Bible the heart. Watch out your heart more than anything else. The issues will lie up from that place. Your life issues from your heart. Heart is your fourth dimensional situation. Your heart is beyond the limitation of the time, space. Your heart is not material, it's spiritual. It's similar to the Holy Spirit. So your heart is fourth dimensional. And if your heart is well managed, then you can live by the fourth dimension rather than by the third dimension. Many people are trying to live by third dimension and very limited power but they can release a tremendous power lying in fourth dimension. Your heart is manifesting through thinking, through visions and dreams, through faith, through mouth speaking. Through these four channels, your fourth dimension converse with the fourth dimension of the Holy Spirit. Through the, you can converse with the Holy Spirit through the thinking, through visions and dream, through faith, through mouth speaking. And so if you manage your heart through thinking, through visions and dreams, through faith, through mouth speaking, you can manage your own life. Many people do not manage their life. They leave their mind, their spirit alone. So they are living by the third dimension. But even unbelievers, they have spirit, and they can live by the fourth dimension. Even more, you and I are born again, Holy Spirit in the world, spiritual beings. And we release our fourth dimensional power, 
renewed thoughts, renewed visions and dreams, renewed faith and renewed mouth speaking. The tremendous energy is released from your life to change your circumstances. Just recently I read a tremendous book written by the Japanese scientist who specialized about water. Emoto Minoru, Dr. Emoto Minoru, who wrote a book about water. And according to his finding, that he put two glasses of water on the table, one another. And to one glass of water, he said, I love you, I thank you. To the other glass of water, he said, you fool, you are ugly. Then he right away began to take the picture of the crystal of the water. The first glass of the water to which he said, thank you, you are beautiful, I love you. It's made a beautiful six-angled crystal, shining. But to the other glass of water to which he said, you fool, you wretched, the crystal was absolutely broken, shattered, and had a black hole. Just as by speaking to the water, water receives information from your mouth. And then, not only water, but he put the rice on the first glass, cooked the rice, and second glass also cooked the rice. And he said to the cooked rice, you are beautiful, I thank you. The other, he said, you fool, you wretched, for 15 days. The first glass turned into a wonderful yeast, but second glass of rice turned into a Decayed, smelly, dung. And then he tested in another way. Instead of speaking, he just only thought. He just looked at the water and he thought, you are good, you are wonderful, lovely. The other, he said, you are ugly, you are fool. Only he thought, but he had the same result. And according to his writing, he went to the big lake. And when he tested the water of the lake, the lake, the crystal was completely broken. The particle of the water was totally destroyed, ugly looking. Then he found out that some woman committed suicide the other night in the water. She struggled, she suffered so much. Water got all the information of the negative things and the crystal was broken and shattered. So he called the pastors to come and pray for the, over the lake. He prayed over one hour the whole water in the lake turned into a beautiful crystal, shining. So you see, the circumstances are responding to your word and to your thoughts. You are the water jug because you are conscious of 70% of water. So what you speak, what you think, give effect to your health, your condition every day. And the, the, your circumstance, Bible says, Second Peter chapter three verse five, that world is standing out of water and in the water. So this ceiling is consists of water. This earth, this floor is consists of water, even though we can't see with our own eyes. But the basic particles are all consists of water. So everything responds to your word to your thought. Through word and thought, you subdue your own physical body, your own situation, your own home, your business, all material circumstances. This is written in the Bible for a long time ago, but scientists begin to find out now through the scientific method. So when mother become pregnant with a child, the fetus is consists of 99% water. Speak to the water, I love you, you are a wonderful child. You are very, very beautiful. Then the water in fetus make a beautiful crystal form and give health, healthy growth. But when you fight each other and curse, then the child is totally broken in, in a cell system, and terrible. And when you are, you are educating children, they are 90% water. So you say good word, encourage, positive word to children. Then all of their water 
make a crystal clear, wonderful character. Children grow in a wonderful way. But when you say negative word and curse and say cuss word, that bring a destruction to their cell system, all the world, and so they are becoming a bad natured children. You are the water bottle. Children are even more water bottle. This whole world is standing out of water and in the water. So by our fourth dimensional consciousness, you can change your life and your circumstances. And without knowing that, I am practicing from the beginning of my ministry. I was thinking that my tent church would turn into a big cathedral. I was thinking of the tens of thousand people swam to the church. I was thinking, I was sitting down and dreaming that specifically. And I believed and I spoke about that over and over again. And the tremendous power released from my speaking and from my consciousness. Many people think that uh, they are thinking, their vision, their faith, their mouth speaking will not bring a power. No. When you see the physics, the law of the Einstein, E equal MC square, you will understand that. Where I can apply the spiritually, energy equal M, the mass, instead of mass, instead of the number of the people multiplied by the consciousness square. When two or three gather together and pray, you bring a tremendous energy because your prayer brings energy. Tremendous energy that can change the world. You, America, you right now have a financial trouble. That financial trouble is bringing turbulence throughout the whole world. You can only stop this financial trouble by American church. No government power can stop. No Congress can power stop the situation. Because this all turbulence started from the mind of the people. They don't trust each other. They don't trust the specialists. They don't trust the government. And so all of this trouble occurred and to make a violent turbulence. And who could stop this violent turbulence? Who could subdue this violent turbulence? Church. When you get together and pray and release the power, then you can subdue the situation. This is not just a joke. This is truth. I have experienced in my country, and the things are working same way. Even this time when I, we were leaving Seoul, Korea, the pilot said that according to the meteorologist, we are going to have very great turbulence through over the Pacific Ocean. And I felt bad because I've been traveling so often, I like peaceful flight instead of turbulence. <laughs> but I said in my head, I'm going to subdue the situation. So I sat down, I look at God. You know, the Bible says, trust in God and you command to this mountain to be moved to yonder sea and believe what you say it shall come to pass this way. God is not going to subdue the situation for you. You should subdue. God has given that power to you. You are the first dimension. You have the power to subdue. God says, you sit down, I will subdue for you. No, God says, you subdue this earth. So I said, dear God, I thank you because you are my father. I need to have a peaceful flight. I need a, a strength to go to Louisiana to speak. And in my mind, I saw my God come and help me. And I dreamed the peaceful flight in my mind. I visualized that my flight would be very peaceful. And I believed. Believing is choosing, you know. Believing is choosing. Many people say that we don't have faith. But that's a lie. When the disciple of Jesus Christ came to Jesus, said, add faith to us. Jesus never added any faith because he does not need to. It's if you have faith as large as a master seed. Because all of them had more than Created the master seed. I am carrying master seed on my handphone. Here, master seed inside here. Free master seed. Whenever devil come to me, say, you have no faith. Say, you are a liar. Here, I have master seed. You have more than master seed faith. 
There's a reason Jesus Christ did not need to add any faith to you. Jesus, when you have mustard seed and use that faith, you can move the mountain. So it's a matter of choosing, a matter of having or not having the faith. So you choose to believe. I chose to believe to a peaceful flight. And I spoke constantly. We are going to have a very peaceful flight. You weather, calm down. Be very peaceful. Calm down. You are not going to have turbulence to me. And all through 13 hours, we have had a wonderful peaceful flight. We had no turbulence. I've subdued the situation. So... You are not physical being, the third dimensional being only. You are fourth dimension. And you should know that. And you should manage your fourth dimension. You don't leave the many uh, fourth dimensional being alone in your heart, wasted. Everything, when you mobilize your fourth dimension, you are going to subdue a victorious life. Especially about church growth. You must not... Try to grow your church by your third dimension struggling. You must use fourth dimension. About 20 years ago, I went to Australia to conduct church growth conference. Thousands of Australian pastors got together. For one week, I lectured about church growth, but they didn't pay much attention. They said, Joe, church growth is going to happen in America and Korea and some other part of the world, not in Australia. Australian people love athletes and uh, games that Sunday they don't come to church. So they will not accept my teaching about church growth. So final day I said, you please cooperate with me on one point. Forget all other teaching, but please do this one thing. Bring the white paper and pencil. So they all brought the white paper and pencil. And we all prayed together. I said, please have a definite goal of church growth in five years. And write down on the paper. Five-year plan, 100, 300, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000. At those days, Australian church average had 50 members. So I asked them to write down and don't laugh. They said, don't, don't laugh. This will really change your whole life. So they wrote 100, 300, someone wrote 5,000. And I said, you bring this paper and paste on the wall of your office or on the mirror, every day, as many times as possible, look at this number and dream that your church become like this. And declare in your mouth that my church in five years shall become like this. They all laugh. This is the spiritual principle. This is not physical principle, not the third dimensional. This is fourth dimensional power. Through this, you can subdue the, your situation. And two years later, I was visiting Australia again. The general superintendent of Australian Assembly of God came to the Sydney airport and hugged me, and he cried. He said, Joe, before you came and lectured that two years ago, we had zero growth in 10 years. In 10 years, we had one church pioneered, one church closed, so we had 0% growth. But after hearing your message, we laughed, but we anyway tried because we had no other way. We wrote down the numbers. I myself personally wrote my church as a, a church of 5,000 members. We all pasted on the wall of office and mirror, and we dreamed, we visualized, we claimed, we shouted. And in two years, we Australian Assembly of God Church has more than 100% growth. And the later that General Superintendent has 5,000 members in Australia, the largest city in Australia. Things works. First dimension is energy. It's not ritualism. It is not theology or doctrine. So you have that first dimension in your heart, your spirit. Your spirit is manifesting through thinking, through visions and dream, through faith, through mouth speaking. Those four are the channels through which you express yourself and you connect yourself with God. God converses with you through your thinking, through your visions, through your faith, and through your mouth speaking. And then how do you make your first dimension? Through the word of God. 
When you feed your mind, your thoughts, your dream, your faith, and your mouth speaking through the word of God, then you will speak like God speaks. You will dream like God dreams. You will believe like God believes. You will talk like God talks. You will be in the God's place on the earth. Yeah.